Keeping longer lines smooth without using the pen tool? That's a really, really good question. A lot of, a lot of what, line, what goes into line work is um, technique and uh, hand weight. So you only really, if you want to keep a line long and smooth, you brush down. And uh, basically what you have to do is work with a specific kind of speed. So let's say I want to do her jacket. But I don't want to keep it like this really, really um, uh, boring kind of shape. And I want to give the jacket some sort of lightness or some sort of lightweight feeling. Um, you know, just to show off the fabric a little bit. What I would have to do is... First of all, the most important thing to do before drawing anything is sketching a little bit just to just to stretch. This is something I do a lot, a lot, um, and I really recommend all of you do it as well. It's really good for getting yourself sort of as oiled as possible before jumping in and trying a really, really strong line. It's just trying your best to get yourself familiar with the dashboard. And what I do is I start the line before I want to, before I have, before it's limit. And what I do with the line is either I'll edit the line or I'll start where the limit is. And with a, with a really increased amount of speed, I will create that line. And that that is pretty much the secret, is investing some speed. Speed in the line reduces the jitter and reduces the anxiety and it reduces the the kind of slow look that you have in line. You see those little bits of the jitter, especially if your pen pressure is really um, iffy with the jitter. You want to work with some speed. Uh, speed will also help you deal with the larger objects. So zooming out is really good when you want to cover large spaces. The speed you need will be or the space you need to cover will be less when the speed will be the same. So zooming out and speeding up your brush are two amazing things to help keep your lines fluid, straight, flowy, and uh, with, as little jitter, with as little jitter as possible. Um, um, for me, it's drawing light and being able to erase it, though it's obviously only a traditional issue. Um, also making controlled long lines. Yeah, the long line issue um, is a matter of speed and it's a matter of accuracy as well. You have to try it a couple times before you really get the right line you want and you're going to have to get used to that. In traditional, what I do with my sketchbook, maybe one day I'll set up my webcam and it'll be just a webcam instead of the live stream on my desktop and I'll show you sort of what techniques I use traditionally. Even though I did a video on that already, I can just do another um, and what I usually do is I keep my brush really, really light and I will try like the line that I want like 10 or 15 times before I really get the line that I like. And after I get the line that I like, I'll try to do it again in that shape or make it darker so that I can keep it. Whenever I sketch anything by hand, I'm always working really, really light because these lines are very forgiving and easy to erase away when you don't want them anymore. Um, do not throw in heavy, heavy lines without creating a nice network of underwiring first, drawing the major shapes, <clears throat> and that will sort of really, really help develop a, a more solid look to your lines, a more unified look to your lines. And always, this is another tip, so the first tip was zoom out for higher, for lower distances that you have to cover. Speed up your brush for smoother lines that are longer. Even the short lines will be smoothed out if you work with a faster hand. But um, uh, with your line, remember that you're representing a shape, uh, the, 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 the stamp of that form. So sometimes it's not necessary that you always draw the under shape. It's not necessary that you always draw the square underneath because that could really muck up your lines. Um, what you have to do is think like an animator. So that's sort of what animators do. After they get the initial sketch, the first keyframe, and they draw like this, let's say it's a squirrel or whatever, and they're drawing it, um, they get the basic shapes down, but after they start animating, they sort of get a handle for the, for the core shape. Sorry, one second. As little variety in your lines as possible, and <clears throat> when you do throw in those extra small lines, make sure that they're not as big a jump from your from your main line size. So let's say this is my main line size, it's a 6. If I want to detail a little bit, what will happen is I'll shrink my brush, but probably only up till here. It's easier to animate... <laughs> I think I just drew the twitch symbol, didn't I? It's easier, it's easier to animate with, uh, with 
lines that are more alike in size. Um, and that's what makes line art really, really nice, is that having a consistent consistency in the line size. You can vary the lines, and I've done a video on this, on how to vary lines by reducing thickness and thinness, uh, by thinning out lines the longer they last, um, as if they were like stretched rubber. But if you do want that um, cartoony line look, you have to make sure all of those lines are consistent so that you get that animation feeling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch over this person's drawing and then I'm going to show the before and after, after I cleaned up the lines a little bit. And, uh, and we'll talk about sort of how important it is to keep your lines clean so that you'll get a better read from the form. So any other questions about difficulties that you guys might face with lines? I'm going to go back up to six. And with some sort of speed, I'm going to try to get the shape of her hat. And I will... Uh, Control Z. That's just something that you get because of the, because of you know your use of digital. And if it, if it was um realist, like if it was traditional, not realistic. If it was traditional work, I would be just drawing it over and over and over again, and until I get the right circle that I want. So it's okay if you're not going to get the right shape the first time. When I say add speed, I expect that you guys will not get the right line the first time. When you're throwing in speed, you're not really you're really just gambling at that point and you're not going to get it on the exact same shape you imagine it the first time, you have to start growing a dependency on the, the, the speed, so you have to grow a trust um, for that dependency. So please imagine that it's just like, you know, you have to do it enough times before you really get a handle over what your hand weight feels like. Everyone has a different way of holding their pencil. Everyone has a different way of feeling the way, their way through a sketch. So if you want to um, get as much as you can out of the speed, invest the speed in your sketches, get, get, just get a paper and just draw circles. This is something I assign to a lot of my students who are doing figure drawing. Um, and the, the figure drawing, as you know, it requires a lot of use of lines and gesture drawings and gesture lines. So what I made them do is, before every homework piece that they made for me, I made them uh, practice, give me practice sheets where they would draw squares and circles for me, um, just so that I could I feel like they're actually practicing their hand weight and becoming familiar with how they hold the brush and how the brush feels with their specific technique. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to shrink my brush for those smaller bits, and it's not a large brush shrink. It's not that small. And I'm trying to create a gesture line at any opportunity that I can. I want to bring in some intrigue, some curvature. A straight line is a boring line, especially in things that might become animated or things that you want to make feel like can be animated. Um, this is too small, but... Uh, I think that'll work just fine. So what you want to do all the time is minimize the basic, basically what, what the biggest critique I have of this image, this, this image built beneath, is minimize as much as possible the amount of lines you need. So you see I'm using very little strokes and if I do have to combine two strokes together as I did here, I'll try to make it look like one specific stroke. The cleaner your, your bigger shapes are, the better it will look. So that's another thing to write down. Um, lots of tips here. Um, think like an animator, zoom out, add some speed. And the larger the shape, the larger the line. Or the larger the shape, um, the less lines you use to make it. Because you don't want to, if you have a large shape, that's exactly the opposite of what the student did here, is they used all the lines imaginable for this and they just threw that in there and I guess it was just like a I guess it gave them courage enough to finish the image, but it also really, really created a messy, um, overly messy, not even artistically messy, I'm so sorry to say, uh, it was just messy uh, texture that didn't allow the lines to come through. And then you started shading, and that made some things even more messy because now we're dealing with lines. Lines enough, you know, used minimally are enough of a pain in the ass to, to shade over they have to be replaced eventually. So if you have all of these lines, how are you going to replace these lines? What are these lines telling you? Where are the limits of the anatomy that these lines are, lines are hinting you at? So whenever you talk about line art, remember it's all about efficiency. Efficiency is the key and that's pretty much what we should be worried about. So as little lines as possible and there's always speed. You'll see me just speed up halfway through the line because I know that curve won't look good unless I speed up. 
So I get the elbow. If this was something out of my imagination, I'd do it much faster. For those who hang out with me, they know. Um, but because I have to sort of edit someone else's drawing, I have to not mess it up. And I'm kind of, you know, even now I'm kind of confused as to what your lines are telling us. What are your lines really saying in it? You've chosen so many different sizes, so many different strokes, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what you're trying to say with this drawing. So it's very, very, um, your, this is one big thing that I'm going to say and it's very mean. You're hiding behind lack of content. Um, you're hiding your lack of content behind excessive use of lines. So this doesn't read as anything. This doesn't read as anything much. But you're throwing a bunch of lines in there hoping that they would read into something. That's a good technique to start off in the lower stages. But you got to erase that away and make sense of it. So over here, what really were you drawing? If I draw a clean line over this collar right here, what kind of shirt is it? What is what exactly is happening? So the less you minimize, the more you minimize your lines, less lines you have, the more you're expect, expected to actually create something that's readable. And that increases the difficulty, of course, but it also yields good results. So I'm just trying to clean up here. I'm not sure what the hands are doing. I have to look up a reference for that. I think they're plugging something in. I'm getting rid of that. And now to focus on the legs. I have to zoom out. The legs are moving down. So I want to get the knee. And sometimes I will tilt my canvas because that's what I would do in real life as well to get a controlled brush stroke. So I've tilted my canvas just a little bit. It's just a rotation. So I can get sort of like the, her wonky Pippi Longstocking legs. Oopsie. And I'll get the knee first because the knee is sort of the landing strip for the, for the thigh lines. And after I get a nice sort of knee shape, I'll rotate it. And with speed, you know, confident speed, and you can always erase the tails that stick out on either side. You can always erase those away. I'll sort of complete the thigh. That's pretty much my process whenever I work with lines. I, I don't really do anything else. Um, it really keeps your lines very, very pretty and very clean. And these lines are very clean. And we can always shrink our brush and bring in more detail, but the core lines of the core shapes have to be a consistent shape, especially if you're animating. And an animators, what they do is they draw the keyframes. The keyframes are the most important frames in the motion that they're trying to capture. Um, the, the major axes, the, 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 the limits of the motion. So if someone jumping, they'll draw the highest point of the jump, the lowest point of the jump, and the midpoint of the jump, and someone else will come in and draw the fills or, or, or bring in the, 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 the keys that go in between the keyframes. Um, so you, the same thing with drawing. You have to get rid of the bigger shapes first and then bring in the smaller shapes with a smaller, thinner brush. So I'm not sure what kind of shoes she's wearing. I'm just going to give her these weird little shoes. <clears throat> you see, it's okay if the tail extends right here. The tail extended, but it's okay. I can always erase it. I just do the exact same thing traditionally, so all of these tips apply traditionally as well. I just want to show a bend where her foot bends. Um, probably I want just to crop this and show where that limit of that shoe is and same thing on the other side. It's just about accuracy and a lot of it is patience. A lot of this is patience. And let me tell you something, you guys. A lot of great sketches start off as good line work. Um, 
what did I just say? No, duh. A lot of great paintings start off as good sketches with good line work. So if you have really solid lines, you won't need to depend too much on the line later on. Because the line is only hinting at the form. It's not really telling the story of the form. It's just uh, giving us clues of what's happening with the form. So I'm going to shrink my brush a little bit. So when you transfer that to a painting, what will happen is the painting will will have less lines to depend on. And the more efficient you use your lines, that's okay, see my tail is leaving, and that's fine. I can always erase it, but as long as I have that smooth anything, I'll do anything for that smooth line. It's okay. It's not even all across. The hem is a little uneven, but that's fine. Um, and the less lines depend on basically what I'm saying, it means that you're trying to show more with less. So if you're thinking about, um, you know, a bulge, or, I don't know what example to use, I'm always at a loss for examples. Um, let's say that you're trying to represent a anything, I guess, that's going to be turning into something sculpted as a painting. If you use less lines for it, you're summarizing the form with less lines, meaning that the line has more responsibility. It has a higher responsibility to represent as much form as possible. So that means that you have to think about what this line will end up turning into when you, go, when you paint it. So this is this is pretty much where I start creating underwiring and shapes cuz hands I have a tr have a lot of trouble with so I'm going to have to look up a reference and probably imagine how she's going to be plugging something like that probably her hand fingers over the plugs <clears throat> and this is sort of the meeting point Oh, it looks like she's squeezing her boots together. Um, also, when it comes to the face, uh, this is a little bit of cartooning, I guess. It's not really line work. I feel like splitting the hair over here. <clears throat> Can I erase that away and just do it again? The way you did it. Okay, I'm just going to shrink and erase away the tails, and that's fine. Just as long as the line is clean. Okay, so back to the face. Um, you want to make sure that the neck is not too large. The neck you drew is too large. It feels a little bit masculine, so you want to increase the size of the head so it matches the cuteness that you're trying to represent. Large head equals cute, by the way, guys. If you haven't noticed that. Throw in some ears. A thinner, a thinner, sort of more scrawny neck to match her, her proportions everywhere else. And I'm going to thin out the line a little bit here. Remember, in keyframes, they don't usually throw, unless it's a keyframe for a facial expression, but in, in motion keyframes where the whole body is in, included, usually they don't uh, draw the face in yet. They just draw the head shape and then follow up with the face after. I'm not sure what her expression is, so I'm going to give like a kind of like a troublemaker kind of expression. There's, it's really low res. I have to do something about this image size. I'm going to duplicate these lines because I've lost a lot. Okay. So Oh, this line is so beautiful now. Dang. See the pixels? My bad. Give me higher res! <laughs> so, I'm throwing in some... I'm going to start a new layer for the face. I'm going to throw in a basic shape for the eyes. And get that basic expression. the core of the expression and you see very little lines to express more this is how you keep lines cleaner by thinking okay how much can I represent with this line And that's how your lines remain clean, representing only the more important shades and the more important proportions. So 
probably going to need to zoom out. Thicken her eyebrows up just a little. I'm not sure who this character is. I don't have a backstory on her, so I can't really feel my way around the character. <clears throat> kind of looks like a boy, but it's okay. Lines are a lot more clean. And if we want to, if you want to thin the lines out and give them some variety, I made a video on that already, but it, basically I've already said it's just a matter of thinning out the lines where it gets wider. So where the line sort of extends, that's where you sort of thin out that line. Where the line is stretched, that's how the line gets thinned out. You don't just thin up a line by shrinking your brush. <laughs> Evil Pinocchio. Okay, so that's pretty much what I meant with my critique on your work. I really recommend you uh, stop using this many lines. Please try to summarize your lines a little better. Give them a little bit more focus and a little bit more direction. Um, I also wanted to draw something for you guys just to show you my process. Just explain it. I, I do. I did record my the painting, the the vampire caricature I recently did. I did record the process for that, um, and uh, I'm going to be posting that for you guys. But it's going to be a time lapse video, and I kind of want to explain what I did. So if you guys can help me brainstorm a character right now we'll sketch it together um, and I can show sort of show you exactly what I do when I sketch a face so I'm just gonna be here doodling until I see an idea pop up okay so I've been trying to I'm fancying an ogre lately but an ogre with a bit more of a Crushed face. You see, I'm I'm really just going through the basic shapes, and I want them to look dumb. And usually, when you lower the ears down, that's when you get that dumb look. And I kind of want him to be an idiot, <laughs> like a big oaf of a do of, a, of an ogre, kind of a always making mistakes. But I also want him to want him to be a brute. So if I make him too much of a pinhead, he'll look like a Patrick. Um, but if I give him a square head, that'll sort of create a more brute character. And from years and years of working with... Oh shit, I didn't use a new layer. Oh well, fuck. Um, but for years and years of working with the pretty face has made me really favor the ogre face. Like, a lot. It's sort of like Frankenstein. <clears throat> It's made me just, you know, consider how beautiful and organic faces can be and how well captured organic faces are when uh, when we work in caricatures. It's okay that this tail is here, it's fine. Sometimes it's really nice, and remember this, sometimes it looks really pretty, maybe not for the final animation um, stages, but sometimes it looks really pretty if you just keep the lines sketchy and dirty. Not too dirty. We still want to see. The, we still want to see a clean set of lines. I guess we'll make him Frankenstein. A little festive. We still want to see some clean lines again, but we, we the, seeing the underwiring is really nice. Just a treat of its own when we're looking at a sketch. This is really wonky. Try your best to get the best version of that line as much as possible when drawing. Try to get the best version of that line. Sometimes a face requires a gesture line. So when I, you'll see when I did the vampire caricature, I used gesture lines because his face kind of felt compressed. So I wanted to capture the compression of his face. This whole bit is just a mess. I don't like I don't like messy lines. I really try to clean them up as much as possible because I'm always reminding myself, hey, if you're going to be animating this, this is going to be a bitch to animate. So if you want to animate this, use 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 similar lines, similar gesture lines. His ear kind of looks like a moronic ear. Throw some basic signifiers for some hair, and this is ready for animation and keyframes. 
little bit of a dot here. So let's see. Do Legolas the original character? Pretty alien girl, um, around early teens. Um, 20s gangsta giraffe. <laughs> I vote giraffe gangsta. Badass scarred elf. Um, Homer Simpson with his mouth close to the camera. <laughs> Always pretty girls and ugly men. I smell some psychological issues here. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> um, I'm kind of liking the girl, the pretty alien girl, because I want to show you that this is good for not not just for <laughs> for ogres. So let's um, let's draw a pretty alien girl. So what are we talking like? Um, like Roswell alien, like uh, like this. But I, that was also an example of my um, of my process as well. It's just getting the line, the shape down, and this shape though might might be dirty at first. You can always clean it up after. It's again, it's nice to keep some of the raw lines underneath. It's really pretty to look at. I guess it'll be a combination of different um, kind of. Aliens. No, I'm not really a fan of aliens, to be honest. Um, just trying to figure out how I'll do this. Try to summarize the. I'm not feeling it. I want more cutes. I, I guess that I'm looking for something like crazy, like over the edge, like someone give me like a, I don't know, like some crazy animal combination or something. Um, it's a lumpy space princess. So you see that speed really helps me get those really tough curves. And it's okay if you haven't seen this, like this little clumsy shit right here. I never, I, I stop. I give up. If I feel like this is only going to ever look wonky, I give up. Draw the line underneath and then connect it later back up. See, that's so much more smooth. Draw the line underneath and then connect it back. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean. I do want the tip though. There you go, pretty alien girl. Um, uh, you want to give her some spunkiness though. Uh, dinosaur, ladybug, cyborg, elephant, spider, snake, slug, rose, cheetah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm gonna have to choose one that I really click with. Um, keep throwing them at me. Maybe it'll inspire me some, inspire something else. Um, let's see, warthog. Okay, we can do like a warthog um, army general. <laughs> That's fun. So let me look up a good reference. And basically when I look up the reference, I try to see the greater gesture line. So I try to see how much I can sum up. I do want his snout to be in the way. So I don't want it to be like a slouchy snout. That's something I would uh, um, attribute to some lazy kind of character. I want a proud snout, so a snout that kind of sticks up a little bit. Um, kind of like a... Let's see if I can get a pig snout and then get those horns in there as well. So, pig snout. And those two references are pretty much what I'm going to be using. I guess, oh, they're so cute! Um, not the hairy ones though. Um, I'm going to be using a little bit of this reference and this reference and I'm going to be thinking about what attributes I would give to a an army general. So I'd start off with the basic shapes first. Um, so I kind of want him to have a big lug of a head shape. kind of want him to have like a thinner neck, a large jawline basic shapes all just setting up. It doesn't have to be clean. They all work together eventually. 
kind of want that angle to be there. Probably less on one side. I'm going to clean it too much. Get rid of some of the tails. Um, have like a crazed expression. Kind of like a, like that. See, I haven't introduced the animal yet. The animal is very easy to bring in once you capture the human part first. So all these caricatures are humanized. And what we want to do is capture the animal first. I mean the human first and then bring in the animal. God damn. They always mess up. So I kind of want to make him have that crazy look on his face. And then I'm going to bring up the pig snout. And try to capture that pig snout kind of just sitting over everything thinking about the angle that we're looking at the pig snout with kind of uneven and I'm not really one for asymmetry but let's just keep it and then we've got that we've got his Adam's apple again I just threw a circle in there I'll deal with it later to make it match and merge with the form and now for the husks, uh, let me shrink that. My brush is all messed up now because I shrank this. Actually, I'll just increase the size of the canvas because I'm going to lose my brush size consistency if I do that. Okay. So the husk would be going under. Well, first I have to capture the gesture lines. This is the gesture line pretty much that I want to go with for the husks. And in order to really, no actually, I have to make them uneven, sort of. You see the speed is really, really necessary, guys. I can't express this enough to you. The speed is really important. Not looking like a bull, but I don't know. I hope it reads. <clears throat> and then we've got the ears. And then we got the shoulder pads. I have no space, but I'm going to try to fit in his colors. and his collar Oopsie. throw in his crazy um, jar head hairs cut and if I render this I'm gonna have to bring in some details so I want to set up where I'm gonna be bringing in the details so probably some chipped off ears. Um, actually I don't like the ears very much. I want them to be a little bit more proud and less large. The larger the ear the more dopey your character will look. So let me, I just usually throw everything in different layers see what I want to clean up. I want to make his ears a little stronger. I have to search out the reference. See, at this point I reach a dead end. I'm like, okay, I'm throwing my lines around, it's not reading. At this point I look up a reference. It's good to know when you want to... Ew, people eat pig ears! Oh, God. Nasty. Ugh. Um, sorry. Yeah, when, when you notice that you need a reference, it's good to just give up and just get a reference going. It'll read better in your work. There we go. That reads better comes in a little earlier just like that. He's old so I'm going to throw in some hairs. And uh, kind of finish off the face. And clean it up. And if I render it again, yeah, I'm going to be throwing in those chips. Basic facial anatomy. Signifiers of age. I'm going to merge everything together. Do you, did you see me use a lot of lines? 
I used very, very little lines, and it was, all the lines are, are, are so particular, and I'm really, really very, very uh, careful with the lines I use on purpose, because I'm going to erase this, because it's leading the eye away, but um, please don't overuse your lines, it's you don't need to to get something that reads right away. If you want a detail, shrink your line just like you would shrink your brush later on in the painting process. Like his husks might have some ridges on them or grain. So I'm just gonna... Again, with the speed involved, a lot of speed is involved. <clears throat> Stream snapshot is a bunch of snouts. What? <laughs> um, the forehead has like, the brows have like little bits like that. I'm probably going to want to thicken out his eyebrows. I favor those in my sketches. They kind of like bring the image together, especially when we're not dealing with like, usually I'm, I'm really into bringing in some sort of dark around the eyes, be it eyeliner or thick brows for males. It's just, I guess, my style. I have one. But at this point I start cleaning up the sketch where I want to clean it. If I want to bring it into rendering. And I guess we have a warthog army general with messed up proportions. <clears throat> See this line right here is not connected to this one and it's just driving me crazy. So I would connect them. This one isn't connected either. And they would probably have to start in a similar sym symmetry, so that's how I keep symmetry, even though the proportions and the character is all, you know, it's a different kind of, it's like a completely new kind of creature. We still have to keep the symmetry intact. And I sort of just go go with this. I choose some skin, st skin tone palette, and then I just start rendering. You'll see in my video when I post it up soon. That's pretty much what I, what I do with those videos. I mean, with those paintings. You'll see. I, I don't like his husks. I'm going to have to find a way to make them emerge out of his mouth instead. The sketch is all dirty now. <clears throat> Go. So seeing those beautiful raw lines that haven't been edited too much, even erasing lines, I'm very, very careful when I erase the lines. I always try to erase it and keep the shape as, as clean as possible of the line. The line is all you have. You don't have shades. You don't have any of that stuff yet. And so the line has to take the stage. And the line's got to be a clean, presentable line. It can't be a very, very messy line. Okay, so we've got some more time. Um, give me another um, piece to sketch for you guys. Let me see what you guys wrote. The duck... It's the duck from Courage right now. Wait, Courage the Cowardly Duck. Oh, the duck. Oh, okay. You mean uh, the quack. There's also another duck. The no, he's a goose. The goose god. I love that guy. <clears throat> if possible, would you, able, would you be able to maybe take one of these to color? Uh, I'm not sure we have time. But that's what I'm saying. I'm sort of explaining what's going to be coming in the video that I'm going to be posting for you guys. Um... Does anybody have anything spider ninja? Uh, okay, so that's going to be tricky. All right, let's see what I can do. So, I mean, what kind of spider? I'm not feeling spider ninja. Because um, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, you know, we're going to be taking, we're going to be taking its flexibility home, so we're going to be, like, doing a lot of these lines. Something like that, and the spider has like a ninja face, and that's like it's got its little butt. And it needs more animation than it wouldn't really be a portrait caricature, it would got, have like little slits for all its eyes. I don't know, <laughs> I guess that's what I see in my head when I see spider ninja. If it doesn't like throw my fancy, I, I won't be able to draw it. Um, Aragon, there, there is. What? Adult alien spider ninja. <laughs> Dude, Spider-Man is already a spider ninja. You got tricked. <laughs> Any, anything else? Anyone else with interesting ideas?
an animal combo, some sort of weird character, just so I can show you more about this line technique. Mermaid Ogre. Um, you're, you're asking me for both the triangle and the upside down triangle. Uh, so let me see what I can do. That's a good challenge. That's a really good challenge. Uh, grasshopper Farmer. Grasshopper Farmer is also really good. You guys are just, okay. Um, grasshopper Farmer. Let's see what we can do. Alright, so I'm saying the top shape of the head. I'm going to choose a gray for the undercolors. Top shape of the head. I am looking at a reference. It's, it's this reference. Okay. Um, but I want him to look old. So I'm going to shrink the eyes. Bring in the age signifiers like the eye bags. keep everything one shape. Line efficiency is the key here, you guys. So he's got his eye bags, then he's got his... Grasshoppers don't really have noses, but they do have these like weird little nosy slits. I guess that works. Got to keep everything symmetrical. So you see, faces have to stay symmetrical. It's it's really it doesn't work like any other way. Um, then you've got so with older people, you get like the laugh lines, and then you get the long upper lip space, and then you have the little pincers that they've got. If that's what they are, fucking prunes, man. <clears throat> and now we bring in the sort of prop work. So a straw hat, probably, probably. <laughs> Doesn't look like an Amish. Um, so I want to show the, the sort of breaks in the straw. And if I render this, I'm just going to have to go full realism with the straw hat. There's no shortcuts. And I want to show the skinny, kind of scrawny body. Um, I can freestyle the body, or I can just, you know, be smart and use a gesture line. So gesture line is so much <laughs> easier. Um, I want to draw some scrawny shoulders. Kind of a lazy collar. tank top underneath, saggy kind of neck. The old people of the world hate me. <laughs> um, I kind of feel like he wouldn't even have shoulders if they were sagging. With arms, I usually just do like a little spring. And that's sort of him holding his tool. This tool would be behind him. Got a little straw. And the eyes, because the grasshopper has to be a prevalent part of the anatomy of this creature, so when I animate it, I'm going to just make the eyes like pitch black, like empty. Because it's a grasshopper, and that's sort of what I get out of this, and you've just got that one little highlight right in the middle and a little bit of extra highlights on either side. So that's... Um, I'm going to be getting the same brush as an eraser. This is something else I do. I get the same brush as the eraser. That really helps me kind of keep the, tr the, the texture consistent. Just like that. And this is going to be really easy to transfer into paint. Because I've already considered all of the major shapes and all I have to do now is just treat them as 3D objects. Um, Probably going to give him a human hand. Probably three fingers only. Scrawny body. 
short sleeve. Probably overalls. My lines have to stay clean. Like I, I, I don't know how to allow it. Really saggy clothes. And I'm probably going to toss in after I clean up the sleeves. A very, very simple... Um, what are those shirts called? Flannel? Let me be tossing in those. Very simple pattern. If I want to keep it a sketch, I'll probably keep the pattern. Flannel is just like a bunch of different size lines just traveling across. <clears throat> so I'm probably going to do that. Just keep the sketch. And his hand, I need to draw a gesture line for his arm, for his other arm. And then just finish up with his overalls. He's also got like three other hands, so I guess I can make his, oh, two other hands, so I guess I can make his other hands um, kind of sit on either side of him. If I want to do that, if I want to keep it strict to the face, then I probably will. If I render this realistically, um, played, played, not flannel, played, yeah. Um, if I want to keep this really realistic, I'm probably going to have to bring in this pattern or I'm just going to do something simple like that or make him all completely green or like a beigey green. You see how important it is to have your references? Yeah, probably this green. This also actually really speaks to me. This is um, it's a kind of human-esque in the way that, that you know, it seems like he has eyelids and an iris. Um... Could be a cool dude cricket if you drew a hammock behind him and a glass of wine on his hand. <laughs> yeah, if you want to make him look more old, just increase the the detail there. Probably a little bump for the eyebrows on the other side. I just realized I didn't welcome you guys. I'm so sorry. Just a line through here. Don't leave, peeps, don't leave. <laughs> she didn't welcome us, everyone. Everyone leave, boycott her. Okay, probably adding more detail, like the lower lip and the bump before the jaw. Oopsie. So you see, it's really important to give your lines some value. So what did you guys learn today? Probably a little bit of old man wrinkles on the lips. That's too many and they're too spaced apart. You want to keep it random. Just added a pitchfork. Just add a pitchfork and corn. Um, let me see. Some wood texture. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I should. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, use less. Lines are expressive even while scarce. Excellent. Oh, spirit. Beautifully put. Uh, I couldn't say it better myself. Um, lines are expressive even while scarce. Use less and cleaner lines. You have made me proud. Thanks, Esta. <laughs> Hi, Faz. Grasshoppers wear played. <laughs> um, so remember, you can use lines even to start off a portrait. Just remember, the less lines you use, the more you're really thinking about what these lines might turn into. So what will these lines turn into? Does anyone have an answer? What do I mean when I say what these lines might turn into? What, what is Isterbrack talking about when she says that? Let's 
good for the season. We're drawing very seasonal sketches. <laughs> um, economy of lines means the ones you have to have up to express the form properly. Yes, so the, the least amount of lines that you're going to use for the sake of the form. I mean, the lines that you're going to use for the sake of the form, and those usually come very in very small amounts, because you're not trying, see that what you did before, the person who was drawing before here, uh, what you were trying to do is you were trying to replace the form with lines. That's wrong. Admit that the form is the king of the world. Just admit it. Because what will happen if you do that is um, you'll, get, you'll get lines that represent only what the form is expecting of you. Form governed lines. Lines that represent only the edge of the object, the edge of the cube, major edges of the cube, and that's it. Dirty lines means that you're just throwing crap everywhere, even though in the 3D version and the real version, there's nothing, there's no line in that area. So that means that you're trying to replace the form with the line as if that will happen. That's not, that's not how it works in real life. And I'm not against lines, I'm not prejudiced against lines. As you see, they're really incorporated in my creative life. I use lines a lot. Um, so it's not a matter of me hating on lines, it's just I want people to use lines properly and professionally and uh, limiting the size constricting yourself in size working with speed thinking like an animator when it comes to line consistency and minimal lines increasing your line efficiency trying to represent as much form as possible with line that's easier said than said, said than done I admit um, using shapes to sum up line general line areas or general form areas all of those areas will, all of those things those tips will get you to draw on lines better in your work and you'll stop drawing the chicken scratch line uh, that pretty much represents nothing. I'm sorry to have broken down this image so much. I'm really sorry. I don't mean to sort of bring you down. Uh, I just want to I want you to think about this stuff next time you draw. So if you do have an affinity for lines and sketching, try to think about how cleanly you can, you know, change how how you can change your technique so that we can really benefit from your work instead of have all that stuff to try to figure out. And that texture. It might have just been just a five-minute sketch that I've been that I've been sort of going off on, uh, and I'm sorry if it was just a simple sketch. But it's a good place to start a lesson, so I took advantage of that. But that's okay. Um, so have a great day, you guys, and uh, keep an eye out for the video that I'll be posting on the process, the painting process, of how to add color. So I know I didn't color cover color today. I'm sorry, uh, but the video is coming up soon. So bye bye, guys. See you later.